Hi everyone, so today I want to run through how we can get the most cinematic shots out of your DJI Air 3. I want to show you everything from kind of setting up in the beginning, what you're saying should be, what a few things mean, and then right then we're going to jump into Premiere Pro and I can just show you how to give it a quick color grade as well, just to make it look even better. So right here in front of me, I've got the DJI Air 3, the controller and the battery pack and these ND filters. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do as soon as you get out of the box is obviously open your drone up. I've already put the propellers on, but they're very easy to install, which you will need to do yourself. So you're basically gonna have two different types of propellers and you have to match them up to the right kind of arm on your drone. The way you do that is right here in the middle, you see it's got a white kind of ring around that you matched up with the, with the white, uh, kind of arm on your on your drone so you just pop that in and twist it and it should stay on all right and then you have on the other side this should be uh, like more of a black kind of color you just pop that into that one and they kind of go on opposite sides so one side you're gonna have the white and the other side you have the white and then one side you have the black and on the other side you have the black so that's the first step really you should can take then kind of get your battery out one of your batteries out also charging these things, you will need a pretty strong charger. It will be USB-C to USB-C. Slot your battery into the back of your drone and then pop off the front case. So as I mentioned as well, what I always use is the ND filters. Now, if you're not quite sure what an ND filter is, basically sunglasses for the front of your camera lens. It just makes, you know, whatever's going into the lens a, uh, a slight bit darker. And this is a really great way to basically just control the light that's going onto your lens. You need it because you want your shutter speed ideally to be quite slow, which I'll show you that. And obviously the drone has a fixed aperture as well. So it's always gonna be quite wide and open. If you have a slow shutter speed and a quite wide open lens, then there's gonna be a lot of light going into your sensor, which you don't want. To get that kind of cinematic feel, you want the, the shutter to be moving quite slow. So you will need to control the light that's going in with an ND filter. Obviously though, these ND filters are fixed. Uh, at NDA, ND16, ND32, you know, and then you've also got 64 in here as well, which is pretty dark. Once a drone is taken off and it's flying around, then obviously you can't really change the ND filter unless you have to bring it back and land it and then kind of change it again. This will just come over time about which ND filter you need. Sometimes I still get it wrong. But the way you change these ND filters on the front of the drone is you literally just, on the front of the drone, hold it steady and just give it a little twist and it pops off really easy. So you just want to pop it back on give it a little twist and it pops back on. So it's super simple. And from there you can turn your drone on by pressing the battery at the back twice. So it's tap, tap, hold it down and you'll see it'll turn on. And just before we turn the controller on, we're just gonna take the sticks out of the back, the little joysticks and screw them on. And the same way you turn the drone on, you turn the controller on. So it's just tap, tap on the power button, hold it down, it'll bleep, and the controller will come on. So the first time you turn this drone on, you're gonna have a few on-screen instructions that need to be followed. Things like, you know, just registration or uh, connecting to the internet, software updates. Just follow the on-screen instructions, they're quite easy to go through and you should be able to get set up really quick. And then when you land on this screen, go to Go Fly. So this is gonna be your main dashboard that you know, you're gonna see when you're flying, basically. What we wanna go through first is this top right-hand corner, three buttons, and we're just gonna change a few of the settings in here. So obstacle avoidance here, I'm just gonna to go to bypass. I don't want it to break. If it's gonna hit anything, I want it to go round it. So right here in the return to home feature, you have advanced return to home. And I changed this to preset. Optimal basically means that if you press return to home and it's on the other side of some cliff or some trees and you can't see it, it will just try and find the most like optimal way to kind of fly home. But the issue with that is, in my experience, the drone can't really pick up things like small branches or anything like that. And quite often it can, you know, just fly straight into those things. I know the sensors on this thing are pretty advanced, but in my experience, it has flown into a couple of things in the past. So what preset does is you set the auto return to home altitude. So I've got it to 110 meters. What happened is as soon as I press return to home, it will just fly up to 110 meters, go in the direction of the home that, you know, it took off from, 
and then just land straight down. So it'll fly over everything. There's very rarely you're gonna find something 110 meters high that might be an obstacle to it, it might get in the way. So this is just, you know, a kind of a good way of basically just making sure that it'll return to home uh, without really hitting anything. So now if you go to the control tab and scroll down to button customization, you can basically customize these two buttons here at the back. So the one I use quite often is the C2 button and right dial adjust ISO. So when I want to adjust the ISO, I just hold the down this back button and roll this, which you will be using quite a lot uh, to you know adjust your light because that's the main thing that I'm really going to be adjusting. I'm not going to be adjusting the shutter speed and I'll tell you why in a moment. So if you just go back on that and go to camera, this is where I'd be selecting D log M. This way you get the most dynamic range in your shots and you can heavily color grade them after. I know a lot of people can find this more intimidating because they're like, all right, well, how do I color grade and how do I get the right color after? But I'm just gonna show you that in Premiere Pro, so don't worry. It's actually really, really, really simple to convert D-Log uh, or any kind of log footage into, you know, kind of a Rec. 709 color space. And you, you get so much more color and dynamic range in there afterwards, especially for something like a drone, which is, you know, quite often you're high up shooting into sun and then you might have mountains or so. You really wanna get as much of that dynamic range as possible. So I'd really recommend here putting on D-Log M. Don't be worried about color grading after or, or, or fear of that, because um, I'll, I'll step you through that. Another thing is um, the color display assist. This is really up to you whether you want to turn it on or not. This is so if you do have D-Log on, it'll basically on your screen show it as almost like a color graded version after. I really don't like this though. Whenever I'm shooting even on bigger cameras, I always love the look of like log footage. I kind of just like to see how it looks. I don't like color assist on. so. It's up to you if you want to kind of keep that on or, or off. Another thing here is peaking level. So I would put this on high. It's basically going to show you a red outline of what is in focus in your shot. And I think this is really important. Like a few weeks ago, I was flying around a person and I'm used to something like the a7 IV, which has incredibly amazing autofocus and uh, can catch and sense people's faces really easily. I was hoping that as I was flying around this person that the drone would be picking up their face, but unfortunately it wasn't and it was going out of focus and catching trees in the back and you know a bunch of other things. So sometimes just knowing what the drone is focusing on is super helpful. So with peaking levels, you'll basically see what exactly what the drone is focused on and you can kind of touch screen to make sure they're staying selected on the right thing as well obviously you don't want your subject to be out of focus if you're shooting a specific subject. Also I have my grid lines on the rule of thirds so it splits your screen up into nine boxes. I really like having these on I just feel like they really guide me in terms of how I want to frame my shot. And here you have white balance. We can actually change a lot of this stuff in another section that I'm going to show you in a second but we'll just ain't change it here for now. So I always leave my white balance on manual at around 5000, 5600. The reason for this is I'm normally shooting in daylight you know, simple as that. And you really don't want your white balance basically shifting, you know, to more of bluer tones and, and, and shifting the image. You know, you will kind of want to keep it, if you know you're shooting in sun, just kind of keep it between those those settings. And the way in post, you know what the colors are going to come, come out like. Because if you're doing, you know, heavy color grading or so, and you put more of a bluey kind of filter on, then all of a sudden the image shifts to more of a, a blue color in, in the camera because that's what it felt it needed at the time then all your image is gonna just be more, more blue again, you know? So you kinda of wanna make sure you're controlling this, you know, being quite hands-on with your color uh, really helps. And there's not really any reason to, to change this, you know? You're not gonna be, unless you're flying indoors, which I, I don't know how often you're gonna be flying indoors, it's really up to you, but then you can kinda of set it to, to the temperature you're flying to. But most of the time, you know, if you're flying a drone, it's outside and it's in natural sunlight. So you kinda of wanna leave that about 5,600 to just be able to capture that sunlight. So if we jump out of that menu and come back to the normal menu, just a few little notes here on the top. So obviously this green circle here with the 89 sight in the middle is your battery life of the drone. And you can see now when it's flying, you have more uh, options available. So time until battery depleted, time until forced landing. But obviously right now it's not flying, so it kind of doesn't really show anything. And um, here you'll have your signal, which they says is strong. This is how many GPS is it linked to right now it's not connected to any but maybe this come indoors um, or you go outside and start flying it normally connects to a lot and then right here you have your two cameras the one times and then the three so basically this is the 24 mil and you can actually digitally zoom into this by tapping on it but i never really do that i don't like the idea of digitally zooming into things i like to you know leave the sensor as a full sensor especially with this drone there's obviously you know you've got the two sensors on there so if you press the three then it will just zoom into that and you've got that 
beautiful 70 mil lens anyway so you don't really need to digitally zoom that much um, so i'd really try and avoid that so just going back to this camera and what i really want to show you is right here on the bottom you have the pro button or auto you really want to take this off auto because auto is gonna just you know start controlling everything for you start adjusting your exposure levels which you don't really want you want to have a real hands-on approach when you're trying to adjust these things manually and get that cinematic look as i was mentioning so if we jump into this button right here now i'm going to be changing the iso as i mentioned and that's the only thing i'm really going to be adjusting in this section my shutter speed is going to stay on 120 and that's because i'm always going to be shooting at 60 frames per second now i want to shoot at 60 frames per second the majority of the time because a lot of what i'm capturing with the drone is like B-roll footage. And I wanna be able to capture more frames so that I can do slow-mo after. A lot of the time your project file, or whatever you'll be shooting, and will be at the 24 frames per second, 25 or 30. So if you capture at 60, then you can slow that footage down. For example, if you're shooting something at 24 frames per second, your project is 24 frames per second, and you're shooting something at 60, then you can slow it down up to 40%. So a lot of the time you kind of want that really like creamy kind of, you know, slow motion effect. Say you're you know, flying the drone over a beach, that kind of slow-mo of the waves. So I always seem to shoot in 60 frames per second on this. There's not really many reasons I, I wouldn't, you know, it just kind of doesn't really they make that much sense. And basically your shutter speed always has to be double your frame rate to be able to make slow motion basically happen, right? So that's why I leave my shutter at 120. So I never really change that. So as I mentioned, all I really kind of change a lot of the time is the ISO. So just allowing that little bit more light into the frame. Maybe I'll shoot in a bit of a darker place. So I'll just add that ISO just a bit higher. So coming out of that, if you click on the section next to it, like I said before, you can really change things like your white balance and that you don't need to go, you don't need to go back in the other menu. You can change it from here. So there you've got your white balance. So you can change some of these settings, you know, in this section rather than going into the other section. So you can either be shooting at 4K or sometimes I'll come in and change the 9 by 16, which is 2.7K. So if I'm shooting for Instagram or something like that, and this is where I'll kind of change that, that setting. And as I mentioned, I don't really change the frames per second very often. Everything I shoot is mainly at 60. So that's all your kind of manual exposure explained. The one thing you will need to look out for is right here on the bottom, it has the exposure settings. Right now in the room, it says minus 0.3 and you will have to kind of keep your eye on this. The way you'll expose the camera is basically working on a kind of majority. So say you're shooting, you know, into the sun and the sun's going down and it's got just a small point of light coming through, but then the rest of the sky is quite dark there's a very high chance that it will say that's underexposed because, you know, because there's only a small point of light that the camera is actually seeing. But that might be the, the shot that you're going for. This is why I shoot everything manually because that might be the shot you're going for. You want it quite dark. You want to just see the little sun in the distance, right? But if you're shooting on auto, it'd probably start cranking everything up to be able to see, you know, all the rest of the clouds and everything else in the sky. So this is how I captured a shot like this basically was just setting it manually. So you can see that, you know, the camera, if I, if I left it to do its own devices, it probably would have started lowering up the shutter speed, cranking up the ISO to make sure I could see all the clouds and everything a lot more brighter. But actually I wanted that kind of moody shot. I wanted that dark shot. So just saying, saying it manually sometimes, you know, is, is the way to kind of capture the shot you want. This is why I do believe in having full control of the camera. Obviously though, this comes with a downside of you might mess things up sometimes, you might not expose things correctly, but sometimes just have a play, you know? So what I'll do is, as I mentioned before, I've got control of the ISO here. So if I feel like a shot is too dark, I might just quickly crack it up, see how that looks. If I think actually it doesn't look very good, I'll just take it back down, kind of get the exposure to how I want it. Um, sometimes, like I say, this metering is not always quite accurate for the shot you want. It's quite, it's accurate in terms of how much light is being let into the screen overall and the sensor overall, but that's not always really what you can rely on to, to get the shot you want. You know, you, that's really down to you and your creativity and your creative touch and what you want to get with that. So, um, just really have a think about, about that and, and what you kind of want to, what you're trying to portray, what you're trying to capture, you know, and then, um, kind of experience will, will will guide you as well in terms of in terms of what you're trying to capture and how to expose it properly. All right, so just jumping into the computer now, I just want to show you how you can kind of get that color grade from, as I was saying, the log footage to a Rec 709, just to a normal image. And then maybe I can have a little play in terms of 
uh, color grading it to how you want it to look, you know, getting a nice cinematic kind of image. So what we want to do is go onto the DJI website and find the DJI Air 3 DJI D-Log M2 Rec 709 converter lot. And there's basically it, you just download that lot. So right now I'm shooting on the Mac, I'm gonna just take that. I'm also gonna link this link in the description so you can find it really easily. These lots are always on the manufacturer's website, whether you're shooting on Sony or, or DJI, Canon, whatever, you normally get a Log2 Rec 709 converter on the website that you can just go and download for free. And then you just convert your footage basically from there. So you basically then just wanna drag that lot into your editing program. So for me as Premiere Pro, how I do that is to go into Premiere Pro, Adobe Premiere Pro, go to show content package, content, uh, Lumetri, LUTs, and then technical. You basically wanna drag that .cube file into there. As you can see, it's already in my one there. So DJI Air Free. And then if I open up Premiere Pro, so basically once you've dragged your clip into your timeline, as you can see here, you basically want to add a little adjustment layer. You can add an adjustment layer or you can not, it's totally up to you. You can just drag the color correction straight onto the clip, but I'm always used to just adding an adjustment layer, so that's what I do. Find your metric color, drag that onto adjustment layer, and then in basic correction, you see where it says input LUT, you go down and find the correct LUT for that image. So as you can see now, basically that is a log to Rec 709 image and it's so simple. And I've got all the colors there that you would have captured in a standard picture profile, but the only difference is there's just way more information in the shadows, in the highlights. You just get that much nicer roll off and softness in terms of, you know, the shadows and the highlights. It's just, it's much more of a beautiful image. So that's it basically. And really the drone is very durable and, you know, user friendly. DJI have made it really incredible and, and you know, just great to, to use. So I really wouldn't really worry too much about taking off and you know getting used to the controls and all this. Maybe I can make another video about that if you really want to, showing you how to actually fly the drone and that. But I really just wanted to show you how to kind of set it up just to get that kind of real cinematic look and uh, get the most out of the actual camera on the drone. Because I think that's really important, right? That's, that's what you got the drone for, is to capture those cinematic views. So hopefully this helped you do that. And if you've enjoyed the video, please give me a like give me a subscribe. I'm going to be releasing a lot more content about videos and how you can make your video footage look amazing. So thanks a lot and see you on the next one.